some players are loved by the entire NBA. But others are hated by everyone. The weakest, most pathetic. Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant is one of the most hated players in the NBA. Back when he was first drafted number two to the Seattle Supersonics, everybody loved him. He was the size of a center, but could shoot over anyone with extreme accuracy and handle the ball better than anyone else his size. He played on the Thunder for nine years, won MVP at just 25 years old in 2014, and averaged over 30 points per game multiple times. He was on his way to being the next face of the NBA. Alongside Russell Westbrook and James Harden, he took the Thunder to the NBA Finals against the Heat's Big Three in 2012. Just 23 years old. Not to mention, he was one of the most loved players in the NBA, finishing at the top of the NBA in jersey sales multiple times. It seemed like Kevin Durant was on his way to finish his career in Oklahoma City and be one of the greatest and most loved players of all time. But all it took was one decision that would make him one of the most hated players in NBA history. It all started in 2012, right after the Thunder exceeded all expectations and made it to the NBA Finals, matched up against one of the greatest teams of all time, LeBron and the Miami Heat. The Thunder fell short and lost 4-1, but the future was extremely bright. They had a 23-year-old Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook, a 22-year-old James Harden and Serge Ibaka. They looked like they were a dynasty in the making, but the offseason right after the NBA Finals, the Thunder made a decision that would change their franchise forever. Because they had so many great players, they all had to get paid. And in the NBA, if a team goes over the yearly salary cap, they have to pay an extra luxury tax. The Thunder's owners did not want to pay any extra tax. So because they had to pay everyone else, they couldn't offer Harden a max contract and asked him to take a pay cut to keep their core together. And when Harden declined, he was sent to the Houston Rockets for Kevin Martin. And little did the rest of the NBA and the Thunder know. This was the beginning of the end for the Thunder. James Harden immediately became an MVP candidate, and the Thunder would never see the finals again. Fast forward to 2016, the Thunder finally found themselves back in the Western Conference Finals against the greatest team of all time. The Warriors were the one seed, breaking the record for the most wins in one season, and the Thunder were the three seed, looking to make it back to the NBA Finals. After four games, the Thunder were one game away from sending the Warriors home and pulling off one of the greatest upsets in NBA history. But that's when everything changed. The Thunder blew the 3-1 lead, missing out on the NBA Finals once again. The Warriors moved on to face the Cavs in the NBA Finals, and it only took 17 days after the Warriors lost to the Cavs that Kevin Durant would shock the world. The weakest move I've ever seen from a superstar. Plain and simple, that's just how I look at it. Just days after Kevin Durant blew a 3-1 lead to the Warriors, he joined the same team that beat him. And not to mention, they had just had the greatest season in NBA history. Count news articles were made calling Katie joining the Warriors the weakest move of all time, quickly becoming one of the most hated players in NBA history. The entire world was going against the Warriors, but no team stood a chance, winning back-to-back -back finals easily with Katie winning finals MVP. And because he left for the greatest team ever, and the same team that just beat him, the entire internet was coming after him. And since no one was defending him, Katie took it upon himself to defend his name. He decided to create burner accounts on Twitter, meaning he created an account with a random name and profile picture, so no one knew it was him. Cole Casual tweeted at KD, saying, Man, I respect the hell out of you, but give me one legitimate reason for leaving OKC, other than getting a championship. A fan responded with, He didn't like the organization or playing for Billy Donovan. His roster wasn't that good. It was just him and Russ. Imagine taking Russ off that team. See how bad they were? KD can't win a championship with those cats. The only problem was this wasn't just some random fan. It was actually Kevin Durant. He was exposed for accidentally tweeting on his main account instead of tweeting on his burner, giving fans one more reason not to like him. He went from being one of the most loved young players in the NBA to becoming a villain with just one decision. But one of the most loved players in the NBA is actually his former teammate. Steph Curry is not only one of the greatest players of all time, but he's one of the most loved as well. Steph Curry came into the NBA in 2009 after lighting college basketball on fire. He dealt with injuries his first couple seasons, but quickly began looking like a superstar in 2013, putting up 23 points per game and becoming a first-time All-Star the very next year. Just one year later, Steph won his first MVP and his first NBA Finals, taking down LeBron and the Cavs. He quickly became one of the most popular players in the league. And 
Ever since 2015, he's been a top three jersey seller every single year. And one of the reasons everyone loves him is the way he changed the game of basketball. The three-point line wasn't introduced into the NBA until 1979, but it wasn't until Steph Curry came into the league that teams started revolving their whole offense around the three-point shot. In 1979, teams only shot an average of 2.83s per game. Fast forward to 2009, the year Steph Curry was drafted, teams were attempting 18.1 per game. During his MVP season in 2015, teams were up to 22.1, and the next year when they went 73 and 9, teams were shooting 24.1 threes per game. And eight years later in today's NBA, teams are now shooting 35.1 threes per game. Almost half of all shots they take during a game. Before the Warriors got Steph, they were the laughing stock of the NBA. Their last championship they had won was in 1975, and for the past 20 years, they had been near the bottom of the Western Conference, missing the playoffs or barely making it. 2007 was the year of the We Believe Warriors, who upset the number one seed Dallas Mavericks in the first round of the playoffs. But it was Steph Curry who completely changed their future around just two years later, leading them to four NBA championships since he was drafted, breaking the NBA record for most threes made, and completely changing the way basketball is played. But another player that is hated in the NBA is Ben Simmons. Nobody is worse than Ben Simmons. The weakest, most pathetic excuse for a professional athlete we have ever seen in not just American history, but the history of sports. I can't think of a professional athlete that has come across more pathetic than this man. Ben Simmons came into the NBA being called the next LeBron. Drafted number one overall in 2016, he had some of the highest expectations anyone has ever had. And after sitting out his first year with an ankle injury, he would live up to those expectations, winning rookie of the year, almost averaging a triple double as a rookie. The next three years, he would become a three time all star. But it was at the end of his fourth year in 2021 where things would all change for Ben Simmons. In January, Ben Simmons was in trade talks to get James Harden from the Rocket. This would be the beginning of the end for Ben. Even even though there was drama surrounding Ben and the Sixers, they were still the number one seed in the East, their best chance of making the NBA Finals since Joel Embiid in the process began. Ever since Simmons entered the NBA, his one flaw was that he never wanted to shoot the ball. He was a 6'10 point guard, one of the best passers and defenders in the NBA, but throughout his four-year NBA career, he had attempted a total of 34 threes and only made five of them. So fast forward to the 76ers in the first round versus the Wizards. It was no surprise he was struggling from the free throw line. Over five games, he was shooting 10 from 28 from the free throw line, and his struggles would continue on to the second round versus Atlanta. In 12 playoff games, he shot 25 of 73 from the line, which is only 34%. The worst in NBA history. His lack of confidence shooting free throws affected every part of his game. Throughout the series with Atlanta, he refused to shoot the ball in the fourth quarter, only attempting three the whole series, and didn't shoot the ball at all in the fourth quarter in five out of seven games. But it kept on getting worse for Ben because late in the fourth quarter in game seven, he passed up a wide open layup. Simmons, they cleared out for him. Tapping his way in. Spins off Gallinari. Gives it up. Oh, he's right there. Well, but that's when you know that the game is in your head. That's a oh, dunk for man. Ben Simmons right there. Fans booed Ben Simmons. And after the game, Joel Embiid said that the turning point in the game was when Ben Simmons didn't take that layup. And when asked if Ben Simmons could be a championship level point guard, his coach Doc Rivers said, I don't know the answer to that. That July, Ben Simmons was in trade talks again. And on September 1st, he officially requested a trade and said he wouldn't report to training camp. On October 1st, Ben Simmons was owed $8.25 million from his massive five-year, $177 million contract. Contract. A few days later, the Sixers had their first two preseason games that Ben missed, and because of that, he was fined $227,000 for each game. On October 11th, Ben finally returned to Philly without letting anyone know, and eight days later, he was kicked out of practice and suspended for one game for not being engaged during practice. Later in October, Ben came out and said he was not mentally ready to play, and that his mental health was the reason he hadn't been playing. So the 76ers stopped fining him. On November 5th, Ben denied mental health resources the 76ers were offering, so they began fining him again. After months of Ben not playing and being fined, he was finally traded for James Harden on February 10th. After being traded, he wouldn't play one game for the Nets that season, and the very next year, he would play in 42 games. But he wasn't the same Ben Simmons. Instead of playing like his usual all-star self, he only averaged 6.9 points per game, and the very next year, he only played in 15 games, averaging 6.1 points per game. And since he's been in a net uniform, he has yet to shoot one three. And in the 15 games he played this last year, he shot 6 for 15 from the line. Right now, Ben Simmons is dealing with a nerve impingement in his back that sidelined him for the majority of the 2024 NBA season. And this next year is the last year on his deal, where he'll make $40.3 million. The only injury I've ever questioned 
is that damn Ben Simmons. Your key word is playoffs. So that, you, that, damn ben Simmons. Your word is I mean, playoffs so. that damn Ben Simmons. Don't get me started on that damn Ben Simmons. I'm just not going to even go there. He's lucky he's not you in prison for that. Here. You down here, that. Ben Simmons went from a fan favorite to one of the most hated players in the NBA. But Giannis Antetokounmpo is one of the most loved players in the NBA. Giannis grew up in Athens, Greece, where his family struggled to find work. So to make ends meet, his brothers and him also had to find jobs. And even with all their extra work, the family still found themselves in poverty. To make some money to help his family, Giannis was convinced to play basketball. What is your goal for your career? I want to be an NBA, NBA player. And once he grew to almost 7 feet tall, he became one of the most interesting prospects in NBA history. Drafted 15th in the 2013 NBA Draft, no one had a clue who he was. His first year, he only averaged 6.8 points per game, but he would quickly improve to 12.7, 16.9, and all the way up to 31.1 points per game in his 10th NBA season. Getting access to NBA trainers, he gained 50 pounds of muscle and was in the gym 24-7. Giannis has been at the top of the league for jersey sales for the last eight years and has been regarded as one of the best if not the best player in the nba now with just 11 years in the nba he's already a two-time mvp nba champion and eight-time all-star bringing the team that drafted him their first championships in 1971 and making them contenders for years to come and speaking of one of the best players in the nba he was also one of the most hated players ever lebron james came into the nba with expectations that he would be one of the greatest players ever and he exceeded all of his expectations now most people either love or hate LeBron, but back in 2010, he was hated by the entire NBA. After being on his hometown Cavaliers for the last seven years, with no rings to show for it, LeBron knew it was time to leave. And this fall I'm going to take my talents to South Beach and um, join the Miami Heat. LeBron was the new villain in the NBA, not just for his old Cavaliers team, but the whole NBA. Fans were sending him death threats, hoping he would never win a ring and burning his jersey. The next four years in Miami, he took the Heat to the finals four times, winning twice and losing twice. Fans followed the Heat everywhere, booing LeBron and bringing their signs with them. And it all came to its peak when he finally returned to Miami. He was booed every time he touched the ball, and fights were even breaking out in the crowd. Tensions were extremely high, and in his first return, he dropped 38 on his former team. After his four years in Miami, LeBron was tired of being the villain, so he decided his one goal was to bring a championship to the team that drafted it. Teaming up with Kyrie and Kevin Love, he brought the Cavs to the finals his first year back in 2015, falling short of his goal, losing to the up-and-coming Warriors. Next year, they would meet again, except this time, the Warriors were one of the greatest teams ever. And down 3-1, LeBron pulled off the greatest comeback ever to finally bring a trophy to the Cavaliers, fulfilling his promise. He went from fans burning his jerseys to being their savior. After finally bringing a ring to Cleveland, the Cavs would lose two in a row after Kevin Durant joined the Warriors, taking the hate of LeBron and making everyone hate KD instead, who formed the greatest team ever. After Kevin Love kept dealing with injuries and Kyrie left to the Celtics, it was time for LeBron to join his next team. After taking his talents to LA his second year, he teamed up with AD and won another championship in the bubble. And three years later in 2023, LeBron made more history, breaking the record for the most points scored in one career, a record no one thought would ever be broken. LeBron has been selling out jerseys and crowd since he's been in high school. He was the hometown hero, then the villain, and then the hero again. He has by far the most followers of any NBA player, and has just reached billionaire status. Most people either love or hate him, but you have to respect his greatness.